He's unboxing and I get to watch. Oh, whoa, that sounded way too creepy. And yes, he's actually stocking the shelves as we speak. And look at this. The heavy tank thing. The KB2 with the silly cartoon turret and the massive gun. What was yeah. it? 152 millimeter or something. Oh, we got a little bit of everything in here. Here's the Abrams. The Abrams. For your modern, modern stuff there. Ah, I just built that, yes. <laughs> the Pibber. Uh, you had one on the shelf for a while. Did it sell already? Yeah, I've sold two of them lately. Yeah, those things go good. The flak, the gun flak. The f yeah. I have a lot of people who who like uh, anti-aircraft stuff. Yeah, uh, the uh, I actually saw a real eighty-eight when I was at the D-Day Museum. It was impressive, and I think flak actually is an acronym for something like Flugzeug anti cannon or something oh, like that. Look at that. GTR. Modern car stuff. Here's some more. Oh, wow. This might be mine. <laughs> Tyson Star card Porsche, and the, the Germans call it the Leopard Kampfpanzer. We call it the Leopard. Mm. You know, the uh, Canadians actually used the Leopards for a while. It was the Leopard Ones. I think it was the Ones. Mm. Oh, my. Here, we got some good models. The Porsche. If it's not a state secret, who is your distributor? Is it Stevens or? or uh, uh, most of my stuff's Verizon. Verizon, okay. I have some third party stuff, but not in these boxes. Hey, just Verizon stuff. Ian. Oh, ready to go? Oh, I'll just stop. Give me a chance to work on this microphone. So this is a, the swivel motor, the swivel bot. Yeah, I'm getting like to my, so to my stuff in. Mm -hmm. for, so I want to get a lot of, I want to get more kids into building and, and making things. Well, that's, I think, what all of us want to get another generation going. Again, I got a lot of... Ah, that's the 20 millimeter quad. Yeah, the little anti-aircraft things. <laughs> They're not so little when you're strafing in a thunderbolt <laughs> and those little grapefruit go flying by at high speed. <laughs> I know that box up uh, there's got models in it because I snuck a peek. This one here? Okay, that sounds so wrong. Oh, okay. So we got some of our little, little small stuff, little sandbags. The Schwimmwagen. The Schwimmwagen, the little Kubelwagen that floats. That's just a sound sink. Okay. Like when they do the sleigh oh, boards. Yeah. It is Florida. Ah, the yeah. Sturm Tiger. You know, you know those little holes in front of the barrel. The, that it's actually more sort of like oh. a uh, yeah that that's for the flame to come out of when the thing fires. Holy <laughs> uh, that's more like a type of mortar. I would and, love to see that go off in real life. Thing. Yeah, you just launch it on the receiving end. Yeah. <laughs> it was like uh, I think an anti siege device. Uh -huh. Ah, the Ag uh -huh. Panther. Oh man, first time those things showed up on the battlefield, they knocked out about uh, four or five Churchill tanks, which everybody thought was pretty impervious. They'd never seen it before, basically a Panther with an 88 millimeter bolted to the casemate. Uh, yeah, Mark Felton did a, a video on that, and it, was, it did not go well for the Canadians or British that day. What do we got here? Tamiya. Yeah, Tamiya kits. The, uh, we were just Ford Escort. I was just talking about how few kits, the only kits you can find of an Escort are like the rally cars. Yeah. No one just makes the Escort because nobody wanted an Escort. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do we have here? The uh, TT02. It was Subaru. Subaru. WRX. Okay. And then. These are not cheap model cars, but you seem to be, they seem to be flying off the shelves or driving uh, off. They're uh, much better than expected. Yeah, car, you, cars make up about 60% of models. Classic. There we go. Classic. Oh, uh, I remember when those were, every college student on earth had a Honda 65 or a Volkswagen Bug. Yeah. That's when back when Herbie the Love Bug was so popular. Da, 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 da. More stuff, more stuff. We want more stuff. I had 21 boxes delivered today. Woohoo! Good times at Hurricane Hobbies. And I have another 
I have another order just as large coming tomorrow. So. Oh, I'm going to be at work tomorrow. More models or RC stuff? Um, a little of both, probably. Oop, uh, I see more Tamiya. Ah, the Cromwell. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Uh, there you go, your Easy 8 Sherman. And uh, everybody gets confused about the Easy 8. The Easy 8, if I remember correctly, it's not the gun, it's the suspension system because they drove much easier with that horizontal volute system. You notice it doesn't have the upside down Y on the bogies. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. you could technically, because all of the assemblies on a Sherman were bolt on, bolt off, Sherman was an incredibly flexible tank. And uh, Germany's answer to the Sherman, the Panzerkampfwagen 4. I have one of those, the, the monogram Ravel one, that I, the monogram one, that I still need to build. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, a lot of people think they should have just made more of those instead of all those uh, tigers and stuff. Okay, I'm not familiar with that. Simo, vet, Simo, Simo Vente. So there's German army, but that doesn't look German. Is that captured or something? Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. Sounds Italian. It does. You know what it may be. Looks Italian. Ah, uh, the little uh, command car. Yeah. The Schwabwagen. The Germans give such. The Germans and the British give such stuff such cool names. Yeah, the American Greyhound. You know, one of those knocked out a Tiger II. Wow. Yeah. The, yeah. What? Hey, little thirty-seven millimeter pop gun. Another one that Mark Felton covered. Uh, the Tiger II. It was towards the end of the war, and he was rolling down the Americans. He's just. Rolling down the street like he owned the place, no infantry support, nothing, just by himself, like, I'm gonna take a throw, nothing can stop me, yeah. And he goes right, in, and this little staff sergeant, and this little greyhound, little crew sitting there watching, you know, they're in a recon, so they're kind of hiding in the bushes, they go tickety tickety down the street, and they're like, well, we're gonna have that. And they just drove right up behind it and pumped three rounds into the engine section, and of course, the back end is very thin armor on any tank. And it caught the engine on fire, and the crew bailed out and ran off. He went back to his position, and awesome. later on, you know, they all got medals, you know, time for tea and medals. <laughs> Take that, Klaus. A, there you go. That, yeah, we just did our, you know, the, I think the Canadians made a lot of those also. Uh, we actually just did our Canadian build recently. That would have made a great, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, Canadian Ford. Ford. Yeah, Canadian yeah, Ford of Canada. Yeah. Mine, by all accounts, a really great little truck. Here's some more. Diorama stuff. I got barricades. Uh, all the accessories. I could use a couple of characters in 124 scale to go with a car, but all I can find is 135. That's a much more modern vehicle. Though. And I understand they, they may still use that, but I know they used it for a long time. It's just a radar guy at any aircraft gun. The hell on helicopters. <laughs> we tried a system like that called Short New York. It did not work. Some modern stuff. There you go. What is that? Oh, the Japanese light armored vehicle, the JDF. All right. Kind of looks like the thing the Air Force had. He's called a Dodge. I think it was just a little armored airport security vehicle. Ah, some uh, yeah, for the air model oh, aircraft carriers. Small, yeah, yeah. For the yeah. aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm. And then some more miniature parts. And that's stuff. yeah, that's contemporary stuff. Yeah, I got a couple modern accessories. Oh, I'm sure, you know. Ah, yeah, yep, the Pac-40, the standard 75 mm aircraft gun. I saw those or mock-ups of them. I was just watching on YouTube uh, a bridge too far when the you know when the the, uh, the British are rolling down in their Shermans and the Germans are waiting for them. They have the big battle, really, really well done battle scene. <laughs> Michael Caine, you know, going, you know, <laughs> but fire the purple, fire the purple. You see him hit up with a purple smoke, and then in come the airplanes. And uh, I was like, yeah. you think about it, an airplane can wreak so much more damage than a tank because a tank shooting a 75 or 88 millimeter shell, but an airplane can drop a thousand pound bomb. That's a much bigger boom. Right. Ah, there we go. That trusty, dusty. You see, that one's got the vertical volume, the old, uh, the old uh, up down suspension system. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, and the, and the EZ8 has the horizontal, which goes sideways. That didn't ride as smooth, but it worked. It was huh. simple. And that whole mechanism could be bolted. If you ran over a landmine, like they did in the movie Fury, mm -hmm. you could just unbolt that whole assembly, throw a new one on, put on some new pieces of track, and you're back on the road. Oh, huh. uh, I saw one of these, a little Panzerkampfwagen II. That's really what the Germans trained on before the war. 
I saw one of those at the World War II Museum up in uh, uh, Hudson, Massachusetts. Okay. It's really an interesting little vehicle. Uh, of course, this is all in mint condition, but it's like, mm. the pr yeah, that's a 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun, or aircraft gun, and it's, oh, cool. for its day, it was plenty of firepower. It just got outmoded very quickly, but that's what a lot of the guys trained on before the war, and even in the early war, were using extensively. Yeah, we know we laugh at some of the dinky American and British tanks, but that's the kind of vehicle they were fighting earlier in the war. Oh, these are very nice. These are modern, but these are a uh, oh, Land Cruiser. They they're small scale, one to one hundred. A little uh, forty something. One forty eight. Oh, one forty eight scale. Oh, one thirty one thirty second 130 seconds scale. Okay. So these these are a little hard body, uh, like one piece little hard body model, but you can put two double A's in it. And it's like a stomper truck. Like you turn okay. the switch and then they, they roll. All right. So I thought so these would be very it's good. It's a model slash toy. Yeah, somebody mm -hmm. could build it with their kid. That, exactly. And then, That's and the kind of thing that would get kids yeah. interested. Oh, by the way, side news. That call I got where you were there uh, was telling me that uh, round two, um, USA Revell just fired their president. And uh, round two, USA Revell, a couple other companies just went up for sale. Well, somebody made an offer, but they wouldn't sell all of them to one person. So there are about to be some big changes in the American kit model business. Huh. New to my kit. There you go, modern, Supra. Modern Supra. I remember that was a car everybody wanted. Yeah, it still is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are all random parts and stuff. A bunch of Tamiya parts. These are. I'm very excited about these. I got all these these uh, sport motors and uh, oh, motors yeah. for for, uh, for the Tamiya kits. And then here's your putty, putty and paints and stuff. We'll go through that stuff. Later. Got any black in there? Uh, we'll have tomorrow, to look later because you got black out. There's nothing up on the. Tomorrow I I might have I got I was able to get some X I think and XFs in um, uh, the big bottles. Okay. So I'm just gonna set them, you know, tilted in the in the case. But at least I got. Squirrel one away for me, especially if you got a flat black to Tammy acrylic. Okay. <laughs> even if it's a spray can, you're you're out of black even in the rattle cans. Oh, those will be in here. The, I just haven't unwrapped okay. the, the rattle can. I'll make sure to swing by and get someone to get back. Yeah. See, this thing's probably all rattle cans. <laughs> so you're saying that's a box of paint. <laughs> yes. Why don't you take a break? Come back in a few <laughs> minutes. You see nothing. Oh, here's a bunch of paint, too. There, okay, and I see more models. Look at that thing. Holy moly. Ah, the Hummel. Yeah. Yeah, let's take an old Mark for Panzer chassis and slide the biggest gun it can carry on it. Yeah, that thing looks like a cartoon. Yeah, well, they, they literally were just taking old tank chassis and putting the biggest cannons. They're basically self propelled artillery. Although one of them, it was a Nashorn, uh, knocked out one of our early Pershing heavy tanks because he was in, he was, you know, we were always on the march. We were rolling into ambushes. Ah, the Stewart. I love that little tank. Wouldn't want to. You know, get caught in one because yeah. <laughs> anything could go through it. Looks like a mine would take it out. For a oh, anything would take that thing out. A good, a good heavy. But the thing is, they were fast. They were, they were primarily used as scouts. Mm. I mean, early in the war, they were just used as tanks, but they got out, they got outclassed pretty quick. Well, in the European theater, Pacific, it was still a credible tank because the Japanese tanks were about the same size. Mm. Uh, the Paladin. Now, that's what they had when I was in the army. That is a self-propelled howitzer, and they used more or less an updated version of that today. And with some of the smart rounds they have, oh, yeah. that's one of the most dangerous things on the battlefield. Because it can, you know, it's all computer guided today yeah. and GPS, but they've got copperheads, all this other wild stuff they can fire that just have all kinds of seeker heads. Something like that. That's like a Terminator. And you can lob it like many, many miles. Oh, yeah. Very long range. Uh, the new one has, I believe, a longer barrel on it. But uh, let me call it. it's not a tank, though. If you went face to face with a tank, it wouldn't last long. That's thin armor. Look at that. XF, XF3s. Oh, X all right. X5. We have, I tell you what, just, let's just, let's just, just you can put those over there in my car. <laughs> yeah. Here's all the spray cans and stuff. Sweet. I'm almost happier to see the paint. <laughs> yeah. I'll go through that in a little bit. Okay. Let's see. This is all blues and epoxies. All right. You can tell by the weight that one's paint. Yeah. 
I need to get one of those for my unboxing. Some of those little pop knives. Oh, I like it because it's you just put the blade mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Oh my! Porsche 911 GT1. This is the RC. So this is a full kit you just built. Here, I'll put that on the shelf for you. Oh, and then the classic. <laughs> You know, because like you do. <laughs> that one on there. And this, the much anticipated. The Nissan. Oh, I have talked about that car at length. The Nissan Fair Lady 240. Uh, and apparently it does get its uh, name from the musical My Fair Lady. Can you tilt that forward? Yeah, yeah like there you go. There you go. Just get, get a little reflection off of it. Supposedly, the guy who made that thing just loved the My Fair Lady and gave it the name. That's the story that will not die. That's really? what I've been told. I'm not wow. swearing to it. I'm just saying it's what I've been told. Huh. So I got two of those, and then more paint and stuff in there. Well, yeah, I can slide them up here if you want, unless you want to leave them in the box. That's a big mop. That is huge. This is the 112 scale. One of my viewers just uh, did the one, I think it was the 112 scale Eagle Moss uh, um, James Bond, the, the Aston Martin. Mm. Apparently it was, I mean, it's a great kit, but it like bought him all the way. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a couple parts won't walk about on him. That looks pretty heavy. I'm not sure that's models. Yeah, there's some in there. Ooh, more models. And you're selling a lot of cars and tanks. The airplanes are starting to feel lonely. Yeah. Well, the airplanes I have, I'm going to do, be doing this week because mm. I did a lot of cars and tanks this week. Oh, there's what I we had when I was in the army, the 151, the Mutt. This. this mm-hmm. That's exactly. We had the tow jeeps and everything. And uh, I was an infantry unit. We the the weapons the weapons uh, platoon. Our company had the tow jeep. Uh, since we were air assault, air mobile air assault, we had to be able to, you know, you had to be able to fit in a helicopter or be air carried. All right. So more accessories. All right. So these are the popular Japanese. Uh huh. The, uh, on. Yes, guys, I think I work at the hobby shop now. <laughs> Here's another easy A. Uh, that's uh, different. Yeah, that's the uh, A3. No, no, this is a, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's got the horizontal instead of the mm -hmm. vertical volume system. Stromger shoots. That's a Stug. You, you can see you can get T-shirts with that on. Say the Stug life instead of the Thug life. Uh, that was first had a little short barrel gun on it as an infantry support vehicle, and then they later put it on a bigger chassis and put the big gun on. That turned out to be such a flexible system, so reliable and low profile, that some countries used them after the war, and I think it was the Swedes used them until like the 60s. Hmm. Yeah, it, it is one of the best vehicles that you're probably the most con one could argue it's the most cost effective armored vehicle the Germans make. They were hard to knock out, they had a good punch, they were fast, they could they could run, you know, they were normally supported by infantry and they were great for knocking out, you know, hard points, pillboxes, things like that. Each one came with a puppy. <laughs> yeah, this is my mund. <laughs> Uh, they did, but it also had to do with uh, things that were just very cheap to produce and they were effective. And when they put that big gun on, they can now got tanks. That's what they had when I was in the Army, the 113A2. And I was in an air assault unit, so we didn't ride in armor very often. Uh, but, but that was it, the old standard APC armored personnel carrier, just like you see it there. Oh, the M10 tank destroyer. That's a three inch Navy gun. Uh, they put that, it has the open top turret and the counterweight on the back because we couldn't make a turret that could hold that big breech. That's why it's open top. But that and, that, and, and it doesn't have a bow gun. Um, but that was, uh, could knock out any German tank early in the war. 
And uh, they were primarily ambush weapons. Part of the, the British call them self propelling tank guns. We call them tank destroyers. But tank destroyer is actually a doctrine, not a vehicle. But anyway, that was uh, that's an ambush weapon. And they were pretty effective at Kazarine until they came out of their hiding holes. And of course, the Vaunted Panther, what needs to be said. Chieftain, one of the greatest tanks in history, and a uh, name that uh, Nick Moran uses for his channel, Chieftain's Hatch. Hmm. Uh, a great tank. Uh, probably one of the best British tanks ever made. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It broke. Oh, yeah, so that's the company. Yeah. Uh, that's the four. Now, that's with the small, the short gun, which is what the Stug, the early Stugs had on them. Uh, again, more of an entry support vehicle, but when they put the longer gun, a perfectly capable tank, and then they later put that Shurzen armor on the side, as you saw in the other model, uh, which is... This is the Compagnon 4 with the Shurzen armor on it. So, uh, same basic vehicle, different gun, and a little extra armor. Very good vehicle, one of, probably Germany's most prolific actual tank. Hmm. You can make two or three of those for the cost of a Panther or a, uh, uh, a Tiger. Pretty close. A little bit shorter. <laughs> the Sheridan, they had those when I was in the Army. M551, that's aluminum. That's an aluminum tank. It's, it had to be airdroppable. And my brother dropped one of those in Operation Just Cause in Panama. The 82nd Airborne had the last eight that were in the Army, so they would have some sort of armor asset. Wow. 152 Shillelagh missile system that never really worked right. There's a guy in the RC club that crewed on those things, and I, that was the first armored vehicle I ever got to sit in before I was even in the Army, you know, one of the recruitment drives. Uh, interesting idea, pretty problematic. I mean, an aluminum tank. What could go wrong? Oh, yeah. rounded corners on it. Yep. And it could actually dish out a lot of firepower, but it could not take a hit. Mm. And they had one or two cases where the breaches exploded, killing uh, a crew. So, you know, never dry, never fly the A model of anything. Another great idea, sir. Okay. Is there anything else I can help you with? Let me know. Thank you. Yes, sir. Zespa, another that 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 is uh, another one of their smaller armor chassis. They just had a big gun on. Yeah, way more firepower. Could give a hit, couldn't take one. And that's uh, those are the Italian front. And then another classic. <laughs> so that's looks like what Buzz Lightyear would drive. Yeah. Oh, here's, here's one more. SU seventy six. May not be. Uh, no, that looks like it's got the driver's hatch in front. But again, another self-propelled gun, not a tank. Interesting. So that's probably all the models for this for this order. It's well, still guy, pretty good. It is. It is. And yeah. guys, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Now I got to have to go down, and I want to thank uh, Ian over here at Hurricane Hobbies for letting us uh, be part of this. We'll see everybody later. And as always, model on. Yeah. That was it. The plane was gone. He got rid of that thing. But no, I appreciate it. I'll be yeah. back.
He's unboxing and I get to watch. Oh, whoa, that sounded way too creepy. I'm gonna watch the unboxing. Nope, still doesn't sound right. It's time to take things out and I'm just gonna, nope, still doesn't sound right.